in my research I was looking to work with big underlined capital letter people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities to do some research together and when I first went into the field I asked the permission of the parents of the people that I would meet um, for them to take part in my research and lots of people kindly gave their permission but I couldn't work with lots of people because the work is very intensive it takes a lot of time and I had a year to conduct my field work in so there was only so many people that I could work with so one of the first things that I was doing was choosing who to work with and also recognizing whether people were choosing to work with me you know you don't want to work with somebody who doesn't want to work with you and when I first met Charlena I automatically discounted her from the research. Um, one of the things that I was concerned about was um, that the research, in, in choosing that limited number of people, I wanted to pick people who m most represented people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. Like, I wasn't going to choose anybody who could use um, assistive communication device in case somebody would say, or you were only able to do that research because they'd got a device that could communicate certain things. So in a way, I'm looking for people who are the most <laughs> profound, multiply learning disabled or profound intellectually and multiply disabled. How, how you can judge that from just meeting people. But this is the point. Charlena is an example of this. Because when I originally met Charlena, I automatically wrote her off as no. You know, she makes sounds that sounds speech-like, so she's far too clever. She wears glasses. And honestly, looking back at it, I think that was it, that she was wearing glasses. <laughs> you know how you have those stereotypes, like when you type into AI, draw a scientist, and you get a, like a white man in a white coat. Somebody wearing glasses stands for a clever person, doesn't they? Not a person with an intellectual disability. People with intellectual disabilities don't wear glasses. And so, at first sight, those sorts of prejudices affected the choice of people that I worked with. And looking back, that's a point of reflection for me. But later on, when I was in the field, a member of staff who works with Charlena commented to me that of all the people that they support, they found her the most difficult to understand. And you think, oh my goodness, this is actually somebody saying, this is the most complex person. Obviously, there is not a, a hierarchy of complexity, and that was just that particular person's experience of working with the different people in that class. But it was that comment that made me reconsider whether I could work with Charlena. And then over the course of getting to know Charlena, um, some, oh, just some amazing moments happened. There was quite a few times where we were spending time with one another, perhaps exploring an object together, or she often had um, little gadgets that she likes to hold on to, so I would look at those with her. And it, it felt fine, you know, but it didn't really feel meaningful in the way that I was looking for. And then one time we were doing that and she just suddenly looked at me, like looked right at me and reached for my face, reached for my ears and my hair, and just like had a grip of me and was just like, and you're like, oh my goodness, this feels meaningful. <laughs> and some of the staff that work with her said, it's like she can see into your soul when she does that. There is so much meaning there. And to be with Charlena in those moments of meaning was just one of the most, you felt so privileged and so seen and so valued. And it was so fantastic to spend that time with her.